everybody, James with Slab My Pups, My Beauty Supply, <clears throat> and Clamsia. So I had a conversation just yesterday, somebody called me up with a problem with uh, their mum, their, their uh, <clears throat> dog just had a litter a few days ago, and they were having some problems with tremors and stiffness in the dog, and immediately I thought, oh, this is probably a Clamsia. And they'd been to their vet, and the vet had said, I oh, will just kind of monitor this over the next couple of weeks. And I thought to myself, that's, that's the wrong answer completely. So I think it's important that you are aware of what the symptoms of eclampsia are, because if it occurs, it's, but it's not that common, by the way. I personally have never had it happen to any of my dogs. So um, don't have direct experience with this, but I know uh, what the signs are so that if it shows up, I can then take the necessary steps, because that is the difference between sorting this thing out quickly and having a dead dog. So it's a pretty serious situation when it happens. So let's talk about what it is, what the signs are, how you diagnose it, how you treat it, and how you prevent it. Okay, so this is all due to a low calcium level in the blood. It's sometimes called a hypoglycemia, excuse me, hypocalcemia, with hypo being low, calcemia, low calcium. Um, and what happens is it then affects lots of things to do with muscle nerve interactions. So it can cause heart arrhythmias and typically it causes um, seizures, stiffness, problems with gait. You know, the, the, the dog might be stiff like this, it might be head might be shaking like this. Those would all be signs of possibly eclampsia. Specifically, if you, these things typically occur a few days after birth. And the reason for this is, is that during the whole pregnancy, the mama dog has got to turn food that you give her into puppies. And she's got to turn food that you give her. Once the puppies are born, she's got to turn the food that you give her into milk. And bones of skeletons of puppies have got lots of calcium. And puppies require lots of milk, which again contains a lot of calcium. So where does that calcium come from? Well, it comes from the diet. But if there is a sudden demand for calcium, then there's a gland, and I can't remember the name of the gland, the parathemal gland, anyway, there's a gland that basically controls the regulation of calcium. Because calcium's gotta come from a number of places in a dog, from the diet, from the bones, or from the blood supply. And so when there's a sudden demand for extra calcium, the, the, the dog may not be able to keep up with that, and that's when you get into this low calcium state. And then you get the tremors. You know, what, so the symptoms would be tremors, disorientation, a fever. That's why it's called milk, milk fever. By one of the first things you should always do if you've got a problem with the dog is always take a digital thermometer to do a rectal temperature and make sure the dog's temperature is less than 101.5. 101.5 or higher, you know, that's an indication that something's up, and quite potentially, if you've got the other symptoms, stiffness, trouble walking, behavioral changes, um, not wanting to eat, panting, uh, those are all signs that potentially you've got eclampsia going on. So the first signs of this are gonna be things like you see some orientation changes, probably maybe problems and stiffness walking, it comes on really quickly between seeing first signs of this and full onslaught of, of, of the tremors and seizures it might be less than a day. And a dog that gets that far along without treatment quite possibly could die. It could go into um, have uh, seizures and then go into a coma and then be dead. The treatment's relatively straightforward. The treatment for this is if you've diagnosed this as being uh, milk fever, eclampsia, that you then give calcium um, by IV slowly. You have to have a vet to do this for you. So what do you do? You take the puppies away from mum because you don't want any more load on mum. So that's the first thing. Mums, puppies have got to be hand raised for at least the next 24 hours and maybe the rest of the, of, of the, of the, uh, the whelp. But puppies away from mum. Better have one of our incubators. Puppies away from mum. Puppy, dog goes to the vet, gets IVs over the next 24 hours where it slowly, along with doing a blood panel, gets the calcium level back up in the blood. And that can make a dramatic difference to a dog that's having shakes and seizures to being a normal dog very, very quickly. So that's the good news. Um, and so what can you do to prevent this? Well, let's talk a little bit about who's the most likely to get this problem. So small dogs, small breeds, chihuahuas, 
uh, those kind of dogs that have a, a, a small mass to the size of the puppies they're producing, those are the most likely ones. First time mums and a dog with big litters. Dogs that are in poor health that are skinny, those are all dogs that are going to be susceptible to having low calcium and developing eclampsia. <clears throat> and by the way, eclampsia is completely different than mastitis, by the way. I just want to mention that quickly. Mastitis is also to do with milk. This way you get clogged milk duct, ducts and you then get basically lumpy hard breasts that get hot. And it's also a dangerous situation and they can then go septic and all kinds of complications. But that's not what we're talking about here. Eclampsia is to do with the fact that there is been good milk production and you've now got a low calcium, got a calcium deficiency. So the treatment would be beforehand a good diet. Now, I've read we give cottage cheese. We don't start giving cottage cheese to our dogs until after they've right at the point they're about to give birth. In fact, Dogs don't want to eat much before they typically the few days before birth. Sometimes putting some interesting stuff like cottage cheese on their food can help them eat. I'm not sure how effective it is to get calcium into the body through that mechanism, but we give it. Now, I've read things that say you've got to be careful about this because that can upset the, uh, the gland that controls calcium uptake, it can be affected by how much calcium is in their diet and a high calcium diet beforehand may not be a good thing however if you're in a situation where you think your dog has got milk fever and it's starting to have the the tremors and the, and the stiffness i would go give your dog a pet tab excuse me a uh, a rolaid uh tummy you now what do you call those things um you know the calcium tablets that you take uh um i can't think of the right name for it rolaid's one name for it but uh no, the calcium tablets. Anyway, you can just give one of those to your dog and see if that helps. So I, I would try to get some calcium level up immediately. Um, right, so I think that's probably it. Uh, but certainly, you know, this is an important thing that you be aware of this so that you can make the right call to go to the vet at the right time because early treatment means success. Late treatment means bad news. If you do have to go through this and your dog then comes back, you, the, the doc will probably give calcium supplements to give the dog and then slowly introduce puppies back and see whether or not she can handle that. So I would be start off puppies away from mum for at least 24 hours, bottle feed puppies goat's milk. When mum comes back home, introduce mum and babies and then you know supplement with a bottle too as you slowly bring them back up to speed on mum and then wean the puppies as soon as you can. So, you know, how do you wean puppies? What we use is um, uh, Royal Canine Puppy Mousse, uh, this very soft um, canned product that the puppies will like, and you can get them on that. You know, three weeks is probably about as early as you get on that. So you've got this period that you may be fighting this, feeding puppies and only putting them on mum some of the time until you can finally get them onto basically mushy food where they don't need any milk at all. But that can't happen until about three weeks or older. Um, trying to think if I've missed anything else out on this. I think that's probably about it. So, hey, thanks for watching. Hope your puppies don't get, your doggies don't get eclampsia, but if they do, at least you'll be aware of the fact so that you can treat this quickly and fix the problem. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.